and that is Christine Mary Mills or Chris, right? Yes, Chris. <laughs> Great. All right, so let me introduce you before we can start with the presentation. So Chris Mary Mills is a PhD candidate at Queen's University and her presentation title is Nutritional Risk in Community Dwelling Older Adults. Chris is a registered dietitian and PhD candidate in aging and health at Queen's University, Kingston, Canada. And she holds a Master of Public Health in Nutrition and Dietetics from the University of Toronto. Working as a dietitian in primary care, she saw gaps in the care provided to older adults and wanted to explore ways to improve that care. This led to a desire to pursue doctoral studies focusing on nutritional risk in community dwelling older adults and exploring innovative ways of providing nutrition and dietetic services to older adults in primary care. Her dissertation research examines the nutrition and food related outcomes of a novel aging in place program, including changes in nutritional risk and nutritional status. Her research also explores factors that relate to nutritional risk in community dwelling older adults. Chris currently resides in Germany with her husband and four Sphinx cats. I would like to hear more about that, but first let's hear about your research. <laughs> Okay, so as I was saying, um, thank you so much for the opportunity um, to be able to present um, my my proposed dis or a portion of my proposed dissertation research, um, which is examining nutritional risk in community dwelling older adults. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So. One third of community dwelling older adults in Canada, so Canadians aged 65 years and older, are at increased nutritional risk. So community dwelling older adults are those who are not in long-term care, in nursing homes or in hospital, but they live at home in the community, either with or without assistance. Worldwide, two thirds of older adults are at increased nutritional risk, but this includes those who are in long-term care or who, are hospitalized. So nutritional risk is the risk of poor dietary intake and nutritional status. It occurs when there are factors present that negatively affect food intake and nutrient use. And nutritional risk can lead to malnutrition if its causes are not addressed. So there are numerous physiological, psychological, and social changes that occur with age that affect nutritional risk. For example, um, the senses of taste and smell diminish with age, and this can affect food and beverage intake. And the consequences of increased nutritional risk include increased frailty, decreased quality of life, increased hospitalization, and higher mortality rates. So there are a variety of tools that are used to measure nutritional risk. In Canada, a tool called Screen2, also known as Seniors in the Community Risk Evaluation for Eating and Nutrition, version two, is commonly used. Um, it consists of 14 questions that cover issues that influence the nutritional health of older adults, such as appetite, frequency of eating, weight changes, isolation and loneliness, and food restrictions due to health conditions. Each item on the screen has a score from zero to four and a total score between zero and 64. So older adults with a score of less than 54 are considered to be at nutritional risk and a score of less than 50 indicates high nutritional risk. The lower the score, the greater the risk and need for intervention. So many social network factors are associated with nutritional risk, and these include social network size, social isolation, social support, social engagement, and social participation. Individuals with smaller social networks have fewer opportunities to receive help with food-related tasks, such as grocery shopping or meal preparation, and many older adults require help with these tasks. Smaller social networks also provide fewer opportunities to eat with others, and we know that eating with others improves nutritional risk. Numerous studies have also found that eating alone is associated with increased nutritional risk. 
Social isolation has been extensively studied in older adults and is a significant factor leading to increased nutritional risk. And part of that might be through grief as Ryan was talking about. Um, social support may also affect nutritional risk. Tangible support in the form of assistance with those food related activities that we mentioned before, uh, such as grocery shopping or meal preparation, um, really can affect nutritional risk. And older adults who require this kind of aid but do not receive it are at increased nutritional risk. So the Canadian Malnutrition Task Force, which is here in Canada um, and covers malnutrition across the lifespan and across all sectors, has identified that research into the root causes of nutritional risk in community dwelling older adults is a priority. The majority of studies examining nutritional risk in this population have been cross-sectional, making it difficult to determine whether these factors are determinants or consequences of nutritional risk. And there is currently a lack of longitudinal studies in Canada examining the factors associated with nutritional risk in older adults. Additionally, while there have been studies examining how social networks influence a variety of health outcomes, none of these have examined nutritional risk. For example, numerous studies have shown that having a more restricted network compared to a more diverse network is associated with things such as depression, lower self-rated health, increased mortality, and greater functional dependence. So the overarching purpose of my study is therefore to gain a more comprehensive understanding of how social networks affect nutritional risk and changes in nutritional risk in community dwelling older adults in Canada in a large national sample, the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging. So the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging, known as the CLSA, is a large Canadian longitudinal study of more than 50,000 individuals who are between the ages of 45 and 85 when recruited between 2010 and 2015. Initial data were gathered at that time. The first follow-up data were gathered between 2015 and 2018. The CLSA gathered data on nutritional risk and social factors at these two points. CLSA participants will continue to be followed every three years for 20 years or until participant death. So there are two cohorts of participants, tracking and comprehensive. There are 21,241 tracking participants who are followed by telephone interview only. And there are 30,097 comprehensive participants who are interviewed in person, undergo physical assessments, and provide urine and blood samples. So participants in the tracking cohort were randomly selected within age and sex strata, which in each, within each province in Canada. And the proportion of individuals in the tracking cohort from each province are proportional to the province's population in order for the data to be generalizable to that province and to Canada as a whole. So my study is using the tracking cohort because it's more representative of the Canadian population. So what is the significance of my proposed research? Well, the number of older adults in Canada is rapidly increasing, as it is in many parts of the world, with adults over the age of 65 comprising 17% of the population in the 2016 Canadian Census. And in 2011, 92% of those older adults were living in private dwellings in the community. So they were community dwelling. We know that there are numerous social changes that occur with age that increase the risk of poor dietary intake. So if the social network factors associated with changes in nutritional risk can be identified, then programs aimed at improving nutritional risk can be implemented in the community. As increased nutritional risk is associated with increased morbidity and mortality, this could improve the health and well-being of many community-dwelling community older adults in Canada and perhaps uh, wider across the world. So improving nutritional risk status could also lead to reductions in healthcare costs. Canada has a single-payer healthcare system. Currently, up to 45% of Canadian adults are malnourished upon admission to hospital 
and adults over the age of 65 are 40% more likely to be malnourished than those under the age of 65. So this malnutrition results in increased length of stay in hospital, and this leads to higher medical costs. Thus, improving nutritional status at hospital admission by reducing nutritional risk in the community could lead to lower healthcare expenditures. Nutritional risk is also a potentially modifiable factor that can influence successful aging, as low nutritional risk is associated with this. While there are many ways to define successful aging, one commonly used is by Rowan Kahn, which is low risk of disease and disease-related disability, maintenance of high mental and physical function, and continued engagement with life. So nutritional risk may be associated with each of these factors. For example, dietary intake may prevent, slow, or reverse the development of many chronic diseases. Poor nutritional status is associated with reduced physical and mental health. And as previously discussed, nutritional risk is associated with many social factors related to active engagement with life. Thus, by improving dietary intake and reducing nutritional risk, we could increase the likelihood of successful aging, at least according to the definition of Rowan Kahn. So programs, policies, interventions, and services targeting nutritional risk in community dwelling older adults need to address the root causes of nutritional risk. Currently, these causes are largely unknown. So my proposed research study aims to identify primary social causes so that these can effectively be addressed. Thank you. And here you can find me by email, on Twitter, or on LinkedIn. And again, thank you very much.